Hello, hello. Asus was kind enough to send me out the Asus ROG Keras 2 Ace for review. That will not bias my opinion in any way, shape, or form. Honestly, I hadn't paid Asus a whole lot of attention from the gaming mouse perspective point of view. I knew that they were making other gaming peripherals, but I never thought that a gaming mouse from them would be any good. And boy, was I wrong. They absolutely crush this mouse, and you can tell that a lot of thought went into it, as they bring in a lot of quality of life improvements that many other brands struggle with. So, without further ado, let's get nerdy. Starting off with a quick unboxing, included in the box you get the ROG Keras 2 Ace Mouse, ROG Polling Rate Booster, which is a neat thing that I'll discuss later, 2.4 GHz RF wireless receiver, a USB dongle extender, mouse grip set, two times replaceable 100% PTFE feet, one installed on the mouse, the other for replacement, a 2 meter ROG paracord, which comes out at about 6.5 feet for those in the US, warranty booklet, quick start guide, ROG sticker, and a thank you card. Starting off with perhaps the most important part of a mouse, the shape. It is a medium-sized mouse that has an ergonomic shape, meaning it is made for right-hand users only. They went through the process like Logitech and Razer did by testing different shapes with the pros and seeing what they enjoyed the most and then ending up with the shape that you see before us. It is exceedingly comfortable. It's mostly going to be for palm grip claw, sorta of, kinda of works depending on how big your hand is. Fingertip is definitely a no-go unless if you squint and believe real hard. Yeah, nope, I'm still not seeing it. On both sides of the mouse, where your thumb and fourth and fifth finger sit, there are lines that add extra grip when playing. I personally like this a lot. It's deep enough to be effective, but shallow enough to not be distracting. Where your thumb sits, you've got a slight concave to really secure your thumb with the side buttons being easily accessible by rolling the thumb or moving your thumb all together. On the right side, you have a nice flare that holds your fourth and fifth digit in place for claw group, as just behind your pinky, it flares out more, allowing you to actually have a ledge to hold on to. The center of the mouse has a nice little hump for that is very similar to the Logitech G Pro X Superlight and Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. However, the taper off on the back side is in between both of those mice. I find it to be in the Goldilocks zone where I feel good pressure on my knuckles for support and it feeling like a glove near towards the back of my palm. On the front, it is slanted to the right, giving you a more natural ergonomic position for your hand. Mouse 1 and 2 have slight concave for your fingers to sit in, adding extra grip. This guy really feels locked in when I'm gaming. Gaming. Overall, S tier shape, especially for those looking for a more ergonomic shape. I prefer it over the Death Adder V3 Pro shape by a good margin. Moving on to performance, which to me is very important, but honestly, for most gaming mice out there, it's going to be negligible for the majority of people. This guy comes with all the bells and whistles. I'm going to get nerdy real fast and throw down a bunch of marketing terms and specs. Feel free to put me at two times speed. However, I talk pretty fast anyway, so that might be me talking really, really fast. It comes with the ROG Aimpoint Pro Optical Sense that supports 100 to 42,000 DPI with less than 1% sensor deviation, 750 IPS, 50G max acceleration, and supports track on glass technology. The ROG Speed Nova wireless technology allows for low latency gaming and is optimized for energy efficiency, and the ROG polling rate booster allows you to have 4,000 Hz polling rate in wireless mode and 8,000 hertz pulling in wired mode. It also comes with a 2 meter or 6.5 feet ROG paracord that is extremely flexible, battling it out with some of the best I've ever tried. It sticks up a bit from the front of the device help to help reduce drag, especially if you get a mouse bungee. The anti-slip mouse grip tape is quite fancy looking, provides mediocre grip, but I'm also not somebody who uses grip tape all that often, so not sure how it actually stacks up against the competition, so I'm not a whole lot of help there, I'm sorry. It comes in at a very respectable 54 grams, which I think is the sweet spot for most people. However, I still think lighter is always better. Diving a bit more into some of the specifics here, the ROG Pulling Rate Booster is a very cool idea, as it removes the need for software like you get with the Razer, Logitech, or honestly most of the others out there. You just plug it into your computer, then plug in the 2.4 GHz dongle into it, and bam, you are at a higher hertz pulling rate. Or if you're wanting 8K pulling wired, you would plug in the paracord into the Pulling Rate Booster, then into your mouse. Then when you're done gaming, you just unplug it and you're back at 1000 hertz pulling. Simple, easy, effective, all things that I really love. If you so wish, you can also still go into the software and adjust the pulling rate 2000 or whatever you want it to be at. Sensor performance and wireless were S tier for me. I had no issues with latency or performing at my very best in games, but I didn't break any records either. With the Razer Viper V3 Pro, Viper Mini SE, and Final Miles Ultralight X still taking the top spots from my performance point of view. I've never had any dropouts or anything else, just a solid destroy 
destroying of noobs. Weight at 54 grams is excellent, especially because this is a very well-balanced mouse, making it feel even more lightweight than it actually is. It's got a completely solid shell across the entire design. There are no holes. It even has a place to store your dongle on the bottom. While supporting tri-mode connectivity, I've already discussed two of those, the USB wired and low latency 2.4 gigahertz RF, but it also supports Bluetooth 5.1, where you can pair up to three devices. And it even comes with a nice easy switch that you can easily easily slide with your thumb, while also having a dedicated DPI button and pairing button on the bottom. It has RGB on the scroll wheel, which looks absolutely fantastic as it diffuses well, and the fact that they got all of that while still keeping this weight at 54 grams is extremely impressive, especially since build quality wise, I don't feel any creaking or any issues with the structural integrity either when I'm actually squeezing it. And that's with me like death gripping it. Normal use, I don't have any rattles. I don't have any anything that creaks or flexes when I'm using it. Truly very impressive, especially seeing as most other mice don't have a DPI switch or they have a single switch that pairs for their on off and DPI or they have no Bluetooth and or RGB. So the fact that this guy comes with literally everything and is 54 grams and a full shell without any holes is pretty mind boggling to me. The PTFE feed give you two options. The first option is pre-installed our little tiny triangles. The second is a bigger surface area feet. There are little ridges that it sits in to make install very easily. It does, that does come down to personal preference. Personally, they are more control feel to me where they glide easily, but with some drag allowing it for, well, better control. I don't feel the need to buy third-party skates, but tend to not trend that way anyways, so your personal mileage may vary there. Moving on, the actual clicks. How do the clicks feel? It comes with the ROG optical micro switches with 100 million click lifespan, meaning they are immune to double clicks, but with them being optical, tend to not feel quite as satisfying as mechanical as they don't have as many moving parts inside that gives you that nice tactile feel. Also, optical tends to be louder than mechanical. This trend continues here as they are quite Loud, which also plays a psychological trick on your mind, making them feel more crisp. I see what you did there, Asus. Just kidding, everybody does that. But the more you know. Thankfully, optical clicks have come a long way. These feel very crisp and punchy. Asus reports that they make sure that the left and right click are within a five gram force deviation and can confirm that on my model, that is correct. As both the left and right click feel pretty much exactly the same. If that doesn't happen, what you'll notice, and this has happened with plenty of gaming mice that I've tried, but usually not the top of the top, is that when you press, say, the left click, it'll feel very different than what the right click. On this guy, both of those guys feel essentially exactly the same. I would actually argue they do feel the same. They have moderate pre slash post travel. The consistency of the click pressing anywhere on the actual switch on the plastic is excellent. I would say it has light actuation force. They do sit inside their own little hole, making it so side to side travel is minimal and only noticeable when I'm physically looking at it and testing it for this review, but I do not notice that inside of game at all. And even then, it's very, very minimal. Side buttons are excellent as well. The front button has a little less play than the back button, but I don't notice that during normal gameplay, only when I was being extremely critical and looking at it for this review. They don't wobble at all. They do require moderate to severe pressure to actuate, but are exceedingly crisp. Probably the most crisp out of all of the mice that are on my desk, which includes the Viper SE, Viper V3 Pro, Ultralight X, G Pro X2, Superlight, and the Death Adder V3 Pro. Moving on to the scroll wheel, continuing continuing the same pattern, the scroll wheel here is excellent. I really like the RGB as it diffuses very nicely. It has a rubber ring for grip. Scrolling up or down sounds exactly the same and isn't very loud. Middle click requires moderate to severe force, very similar to the side buttons to actuate with a very crisp click. It has moderately defined steps and is very accurate in game so I can fully rely on it. Absolutely no complaints here. Moving on to the battery life, I'm going to be honest. I suck at this. I really suck at reviewing battery life because the way that I do it is I've used this guy a lot. I don't remember charging it very often, which is my poor way of saying it is excellent. As if I can't remember the last time I charged it, it probably means that battery life is pretty great. According to their specs with Bluetooth mode, 134 hours without lighting, 89 with lighting on. With 2.4 gigahertz RF, 107 hours without lighting, 67 hours with lighting on. When it comes to the competition, that right there is with some of the best. 
Moving on to the other of just random things that I figured you might actually care about, we are nearly at the end, so just hang in there just a little bit longer. This mouse supports onboard controls, which is awesome. I'll slap those on the screen right now, which I find as another great quality of life feature that allows you to not have to download the software. With this, you can change the pulling rate, lift off distance, DPI, on the scroll, I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm assuming that you can adjust the DPI with the scroll wheel to go up or down. I don't know. And hardware reset. Additionally, you can download Armory Crate and adjust settings that way. It comes in two colors, black or what I have is the Moonlight White. I have not noticed any discoloration or issues with the paint thus far, but haven't had it for an exceedingly long amount of time, but a lot longer than probably Asus would have liked me to have it before I reviewed it. The warranty is one year, which is disappointing. I'd like to see at least two years as most of the competition is at two years. It also does not cover grip tape, which makes sense because I can understand why that would not be covered in warranty, but it doesn't also include the ROG pulling rate booster, which I found a bit odd because I would consider that to be covered by warranty, but maybe you can buy that separately. So it's just a cheaper thing. I don't know. Anyways, the onboard memory does not support macros or windows shortcuts and it costs $159.99, which is a lot, but with them nailing every aspect of this mouse while providing all of the top of the line features and then some, I think it is certainly justified and comes in place with where I would place this, which is the top of the top. And all of those other mice tend to come in at around the $160 mark as well. And this one compared to a lot of them brings a lot of extra features like the Bluetooth, lightweight, multiple buttons, the storage for your dongle, the fact that there are no holes, etc., etc., that I've already gone through in this review. So moving on to the conclusion. Again, I had zero interest in Asus gaming mice originally, like literally I was just like, oh, that's cool. I'm never going to try one of those, as I just simply didn't think that they could compete. But boy, I couldn't have been more wrong, as this guy has now slid into third place for the best mouse that I've ever tried. The first spot goes to the Riser Viper V3 Pro. The second place goes to the Final Mouse Ultralight X, mostly due to the weight because it is just crazy. And this latest ASU edition is actually flawless and I like it a lot. Hopefully I didn't just stop my recording. I didn't, <laughs> I'm good, we're good. And then third place is the ROG Keras 2 Ace. And I would re recommend it over the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro for those looking for an awesome ergonomic shape. I would recommend it, and I would definitely recommend it over the G Pro X2 pretty much every single time as it destroys this mouse just pretty much in nearly every category, except for maybe shape, as a super light shape is essentially the greatest of all time. All I can say is well freaking done, Asus. Keep bringing the heat. If you have any questions, hit up that comment section and I will get back to you because I'm very active there. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a dislike. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more like this. Otherwise, God bless and peace out.